Well, we don't have to argue about atmospheric pressure. It is a force to be reckoned with on the Earth, and it is pressure exerted by virtue of the fact that we have a 100 or 200 mile high column of air above us, and the mass of that air uh, and the weight that is generated by the mass and the gravitational field of the Earth causes a substantial pressure. How do we measure the pressure? Well, a barometric apparatus is uh, most simply used, and this is a picture of one that's based on mercury. Uh, a pool of mercury is established in a, an open container like this somewhere. Obviously, you don't want to get too close to such a container. Mercury is very toxic. Uh, and uh, a glass tube is filled with mercury, uh, and one end of it is closed, and the other end is open. So it's filled with mercury, and in, the open end is inverted under the surface of the mercury. Okay, so atmospheric pressure is exerting on the mercury, much as you see this P atmosphere arrow right here. On the surface of this mercury, that pressure is being exerted. In the inside of the tube, there is no such pressure. That's a vacuum in there. The air has been forced out. There's nothing left but a little bit of vapor of mercury, uh, which is, um, amounts to a very, very small pressure. So uh, the height of the mercury that is present in the tube under these circumstances represents the pressure of the atmosphere and the surface of the mercury compared to the pressure inside of here, which is for all intents and purposes zero. So the height of the mercury is expressed as uh, representing the pressure uh, due to the mercury column uh, and the atmospheric pressure that supports the mercury column. So the difference in height between the surface of the mercury and the top of the mercury in the tube on an ideal day is about 760 millimeters of mercury. And uh, this is supposed to be the sort of normal atmospheric pressure at sea level on a certain temperature, uh, on a day of a certain temperature, and so forth. Uh, sea level, zero degrees Celsius, normal atmospheric pressure is, is taken to be 760 millimeters of mercury. Uh, now, Torricelli invented this kind of barometer. So in addition to calling it the pressure 760 millimeters of mercury, it's also called 760 tor. Uh, and in, in this case, uh, one tor is equal to one millimeter of mercury height of the mercury column, in other words, one, one millimeter of these 760 millimeters. So one could say that the normal atmospheric pressure is 760 torr, okay? Now, um, this, if you translate 760 millimeters to inches, it's approximately 30 inches. So you may have a barometer around your house that reads in inches, uh, representing the fact that the column of mercury is about 30 inches high. Uh, now, uh, when you hear a weather report and it gives you the atmospheric pressure, uh, it may do so in inches. It may say the atmospheric pressure today is 30.10 inches or 29.95 inches, or it may use other um, there, there's another term called the bar, which I don't think we'll talk much about, not used in chemistry. Uh, but uh, when you have a storm, meteorological storm of some kind that comes along, uh, the characteristic thing that happens is the atmospheric pressure is uh, lower. This is like a low pressure area. When you see a big L on the uh, meteorological map on television, that means a low pressure area. And uh, it's interesting to know what low pressure really, really means. Uh, 
I have a barometer, which I checked during uh, the Hurricane Ike uh, time, and it was reading 28.9 inches. And 28.9 inches is um, certainly a considerable reduction from the normal ver uh, variety here of 30, around 30 inches or 29.96 or something. Uh, but it's nothing like what a really severe hurricane might have, which could be a down around 26 inches. So Ike was only a moderate hurricane in terms of the lowness of its atmospheric pressure. This translates to about 734 tor. So there are different ways to express the pressure in the atmosphere. Um, and this is how we measure that, that pressure. Gas um, samples in the laboratory also may need to have their pressure measured. And the devices that are used to do that are not barometers, per se. They're called manometers. Uh, virtually, this means something like pressure meter. Okay? They're laboratory devices to measure gas pressure. And uh, the simplest ones are of two types. One's called a closed-end manometer, which has a mercury-filled U-shaped tube that's closed at one end and connected to a bulb. So it looks something like this. I don't know whether you can see this in our wonderful projection here or not, but um, there is a flask with valves. And then there is a U-tube, one end of which is closed and the other end of which is attached to the flask. So this is the pressure measuring part of it. And these things are prepared by uh, sealing off one end under a vacuum. So that um, much like the top of the tube in a barometer, the top of the right hand tube in this U-shaped manometer uh, is under a vacuum. And so if the flask is also under a vacuum, we will see equal heights of the mercury here. There will be no difference between them because the mercury will respond to differences in pressure. And if the pressure over in this flask were higher, uh, greater than zero, then this part of the mercury would go down. And likewise, this part of the mercury would go up in equal amount. And that's what you see over here. If we put some orange colored gas in this tube and open the valve, then we see the gas moves into this tube and the net result is that one side of the mercury goes down, the other side goes up, and the pressure inside the system here is expressed by the difference in mercury levels, delta H. This one minus that one, okay, delta H. So the pressure of the gas is directly equal in a closed end manometer to delta H in millimeters of mercury. And you could take that and convert it to tors if you wanted to. A little bit, we'll talk about atmospheres and uh, kilopascals. Uh, so you measure the pressure of the mercury in a closed end manometer of the pressure of the gas by the difference in the mercury heights, okay? Uh, so P is equal to zero over here, and P gas is greater than zero over here. This is direct measurement of gas pressure. Questions on closed end manometers? There are some questions on them in the uh, chapter five homework and in subsequent assignments. Now, an open end manometer differs in that Instead of having closed end and a vacuum on the right side, it has the open end and the pressure of the atmosphere is exerted on the surface of the mercury. Now this is a lot easier type of manometer to build, but it's a harder one to use because there's extra considerations uh, in, for the following uh, reason. The level of the mercury on both sides will respond to the difference between the pressure on the left and the pressure on the right, where the pressure on the right is atmospheric pressure, whatever that is on that particular day. 
and the pressure on the left is the pressure of the gas. If the mercury levels are the same and delta H equals zero, then P gas will be equal to P of the atmosphere. These two will be equal to one another, okay? Well, P gas, if you need to know what P gas is, you go down the hall, measure the pressure of the atmosphere. If the mercury uh, two levels are the same, uh, go down, measure the pressure of the atmosphere, and that'll be the pressure of your gas, if the mercury levels are equal to one another. Now let's suppose that instead of being equal to one another, the mercury level uh, on the left side, connected to the gas itself, is higher than the mercury level on the right side. Now this would mean that the pressure of the atmosphere is greater than the pressure of the gas. It presses, pushes down harder over here, there's a higher pressure here than here, and so the mercury on the left side moves up so that uh, P of the gas is less than P of the atmosphere, and uh, P of the gas plus delta H equals P of the atmosphere, and if you want to solve for P of the gas, the equation that you use for an open-end manometer that looks like this is P of the atmosphere minus delta H. Now, if you have the reverse is true, then you have a different equation that you need to use. Now, you can reason out what it must be based on what we've said so far here. But if you're into memorizing things, you need to measure, memorize this one if the mercury level is on the gas side higher, is, is higher on the gas side. Or uh, then this one here, where the pressure is higher on the gas side, pushing the mercury lower and uh, on the left and higher on the right, this delta H, P of the gas equals uh, P of the atmosphere plus this delta H, okay? So the total pressure exerted on the gas, the pressure of the atmosphere, plus the mercury difference here. This, this height of mercury from this spot, the height of it, down to a line brought across from the other one here, that is delta H, and that is how much greater the pressure of the gas is than the pressure of the atmosphere. So then we would use this equation. So in order to answer a question about what is the P of the gas when P of the atmosphere is thus and delta H is thus, you have to use the right equation. Notice one of them is negative, uh, in, uh, the delta H term is negative and one's positive. Questions about that? Okay, the units, um, the, uh, the international unit for gas pressure is called the Pascal, and it's abbreviated PA, and a force of one Pascal is equal to one Newton of force, a pressure of one Pascal is equal to one Newton of force spread over a square meter. Okay, somebody who's had physics, um, Physics one, tell me, is a Newton a large force or a small small force? Is it like a ton or is it like a tiny force? It's a very small force, a very small, a Newton. Okay, and if you take one Newton and spread it over, instead of a square inch, a square meter, it's hardly anything, okay? So that one atmosphere expressed in Pascals is 1.01325 times 10 to the fifth Pascal. The Pascal is a very small unit. And this makes it inconvenient for us to use Pascals in our calculations for gas law things. So what is typically done is to use, instead of a Pascal, use a kPa, a kilopascal which is 1,000 pascals, in which case then the uh, relationship of one atmosphere is 101.325 kilopascals. Usually if you just remember 101 kilopascal, that'll get you close enough, okay? So that's how an atmosphere, which we already know to be 760 tor, 
uh, is related to kilopascal. So one tor is 1 760th of an atmosphere, or 101 divided by 760 kPa. So this will let us do um, just about any kind of conversion that, that we want to do. And I've summarized what you need, need to learn at the bottom. One atmosphere is 760 millimeters of mercury, or tor. And one atmosphere is 101.3, let's say, kPa. So those are the things that you will need to commit to memory so that we can convert pressures from one unit to another. Okay, questions so far? Okay. Now, let's suppose uh, we have a, an actual situation where a, a geochemist heats a sample of, of carbonate rock of some kind and collects a CO2 that's released in a closed end manometer. Think back in your mind's eye what a closed end manometer looks like. Right? And at 25 degrees, Delta H of the closed end manometer was 291.4 millimeters of mercury. Calculate the CO2 pressure in tor atmospheres or kilopascals. Remember the closed end manometer has a vacuum on the right side. So the pressure is zero in there. So we don't have to worry about which side is plus delta H and which side is minus delta H. That's for an open end manometer. Uh, in this case, delta H itself is equal to the gas pressure. So this is, this is very simple. All we have to do is take 291.4 millimeters and convert, first of all, to tor. And, of course, it's one tor per millimeter, so 291.4 tor is trivial. Then we need to convert this to atmospheres. And so we'll take the tor value, multiply it by one atmosphere over 760 tor, the equivalent numbers here. And the tors will cancel, and we'll get 0.3834 atmospheres of CO2. Or if we want it in kilopascals, then we'll take the number of atmospheres, 0.3834, multiply by 101 kPa over one atmosphere, and we'll end up with uh, 38.9 kPa, let's say. Question. Okay, we will assume that you'll remember the conversion factors and can, uh, in uh, accurate ways, quickly convert pressure from one unit to another unit. And the main ones we're concerned about are um, the millimeters of mercury or tor, uh, and the atmosphere, and the kPa. Now, you're probably familiar with the atmospheric pressure in pounds per square inch. 14.7 pounds per square inch, we will probably not use that value unless we ask you to convert it uh, some pounds per square inch to tor, uh, in which case you would use 14.7 um, and one atmosphere, 14.7 psi and one atmosphere to do the conversion. But we won't see that very often because uh, that's not the system that uh, we would or 